it's Happy New Helmet Day. Let's talk about that. Let's get cracking. Good Moto Morning. I'm your host, Eric. Welcome to Cracker's Garage. Today's another episode. Today we're going to talk a little bit about helmets. It's New Helmet Day and I have a new helmet review I want to share with you. And I want to talk about my old one and why I choose what I choose and my method of disposing of the old helmets and what to do with them or possibly make some money on them. Let's talk about that. First, if you would like to win these books, this literature to up your game to become a better writer. I'll list the video down below in the uh, comment section to, down below on this video. Watch that video, like, subscribe, and comment on that video for a shot to win those books. I strongly recommend every single person out there, I don't care how long you've been writing, if you learn one thing in these books, it may save your life. Think about that. It's been a super busy week. Uh, last weekend, my wife and I hosted a, uh, a fundraiser and we started a 501c3. What that means is all 100% of any donations go towards uh, a charity. And this is a charity we started. Where we live is very much a rural area. There's not much industry in the area. So a lot of the kids that go to school, high school in these areas, uh, provides them an opportunity to get some money for a scholarship to up their game in life so that's something we do so we had a mardi gras mardi gras theme party with a band and all kinds of fun stuff i'll share a few pics with that no i'm not soliciting it it's just explaining that my life is very busy seven days a week hang in there with me i'll get back to making videos <laughs> just knocking this stuff out one by one over the last 48 hours we've had terrible thunderstorms tornadoes rolling through here uh, they have touched down within 100 miles of where i'm standing Many people, have uh, their homes have been smashed and things like that, so it's unfortunate. I'll share a few videos of, uh, a few seconds of a video of just outside on my deck off the... Uh, we have trees down, branches down. Giant branches were clubbing the house, falling on the roof. Luckily, I have no damage to my home, but I've spent the better part of the day walking a lot and picking up all the debris from that. Mother Nature never fails to remind me who's the boss around here. And the next two days are gonna be super busy. I have to take the Roadster in. A um, Couple of things, I have uh, a rubbing noise coming out of the front wheel. I'm gonna take it in for under warranty. I made that appointment about three weeks ago. I talked about that in another video. So tomorrow's the day for that one. So I may film driving up to Stonewall Harley Davidson. And uh, I'm also gonna have them check over. I got my uh, grips installed, my black diamond grips and my bar and mirrors. No, I didn't do another video. That would have been boring. It's just simple plug and play. But all the wiring that comes down, I want a tech to look at it and check my routing have it basically look over my work to make sure it's up to snuff because it's imperative that uh, all the control surfaces have to work properly. Uh, so that's just a little peace of mind for me. Then the following day, I have another appointment on the wide glide to go in and get uh, a new tire installed on the rear of that bike. Uh, the old one is toast. If I take one more trip on it, it's uh, gonna be down to no tread. So before I get in heavy into riding, I wanna get that squared away right away. So again, remember folks, it is prime riding season for most of the United States. So if you need to get service, book your appointments now, or you're gonna have a hard time just getting your bike in the shop. So bear that in mind. Okay, let's get to the reveal of the helmet. Here's my old one. And uh, this one is an Arai RX-7 RR4, and it's snot and Dell approved for its time in the era. Been a slick helmet. Arai makes the most beautiful finishes on helmets I've ever seen with the metal flake in, in uh, the red and the uh, white with the day glow. This particular one was when John Kaczynski was racing for Kenny Roberts with Yamaha and uh, I had several of the uh, Kaczynski helmets. I re just really love the design. This one, if you take a look on the inside of your helmet, 
there's a sticker on the inside of the crush shell of most helmets and uh, it's the date it got Snell approved. Basically, it's the born on date for this helmet. This helmet was made in 1995. Let's see. 95, 2005, 2015. Yeah, I've, I've strung this one out a little too long. What's the average lifespan of a helmet? The helmet manufacturers say on average about five years and you should replace it. This one I didn't want to replace because I just love the schematics of it so much. I will say it's a very poor design. These uh, vents up here in, in the uh, face shield, when you open them up, they scoop bugs and the bugs would smack me right in the eyeballs every single time, so. Uh, it was always annoying to use this helmet, and it's also very noisy. That said, it's probably one of the my favorite top three best-looking helmets of all time. So how do you retire a helmet? Theoretically, you should cut the straps off and throw it in the trash so nobody else uses it because it's not safe to use. Now, what I'm going to do, and I have done in the past when you buy these limited edition helmets, is... I put it up on Flea Bay. That's a joke for eBay because uh, there's a lot of bottom feeders on there scamming. But uh, I'll put this up on eBay with a, a minimum bid of $50. And the reason why it will most likely sell is because somewhere out there is a John Kaczynski fan and wants this for art hanging in their garage or whatever they have regarding that particular Grand Prix racers. Uh, paraphernalia, much like a, a, a football or soccer player and you have their jersey hanging up in your, your man cave or, or, you know, in your bar, in, in your house and that kind of thing. So every time I sell one of these, they always sell and it normally brings right around $100 plus shipping. I'm cool with that. That's another $100 in HIP National Bank. I just put the caveat and bold on the uh, eBay listing that it is not safe to use this helmet. This would be for collectors only, and that's up to them if they want to purchase it and wear it. I'm not going to recommend it. So kind of interesting stuff there. That's how I get rid of it. Two things, that's why I buy the limited edition helmets, and that's how I dispose of them when I'm done with them. So let's get to the reveal of what I replaced this helmet with this one. Right there it is. The Simpson Ghost Bandit FTW, which stands for Foxtrot Tango Whiskey. It uh, is a beautiful helmet. I love the kind of uh, winter camo effect on it. And we'll talk about some of the features on this helmet real quick. First, I gotta make this statement so people, uh, depending on what country you're in, should dictate what helmet you purchase. Be sure you always use a helmet that complies with the modulation standard in force in your country, ECE 22.05 or DOT. DOT stands for Department of Transportation. That's primarily the United States. ECE is for the rest of the world. Again, America continues to be orner ornery and not march in the same band with the rest of the world. Pisses me off. The mentioned standards contain regulations for approving motorcycle helmets, with respect to shock absorbent, penetration resistant, structural strength, retention system, and field of view. And I'll throw a picture up on the screen what those numbers of those stickers and stamps on your helmet represent uh, so that you understand that. So this particular finish, they call it the urban camo flat finish. It's very much a flat painted surface, uh, really sharp looking. It's the original bandit styling, and what I mean by that is this snout on the front with the vents. Believe it or not, the very first helmet I ever had was a bandit, a Simpson bandit. Here's a picture of me on my RD400 rocking it. It's the only decent gear I had on my whole body that day. I'm wearing high top sneakers, a winter jacket, and uh, at least I had gloves on, but uh, there wasn't much available for gear back then in the late 70s when I was rocking that helmet. I always loved that helmet. So I'm going back to my roots with this helmet, uh, if that makes sense. This helmet is a lightweight composite shell, DOT ECE certified, tool-free shield removal, removable antibacterial liner. Remember, I did a video on maintaining your helmet that pops out those uh, liners so you can wash them and get all the uh, funk out of it from your hair and sweat, and perspiration, things of that nature. It also has an internal sun visor in it. My personal feelings on the sun visor is I'm not a fan of them. They're never dark enough to really block the sun and they're kind of annoying to use and they can kind of dip down a little too nose. So if you got a big uh, snout on you and you have an off in your bike, you may get some lacerations on your snow, on your nose from that, that shield. The quick fix to that is you can not drop it all the way down. 
adjust it accordingly, if that makes sense. Integrated speaker and boom mic pockets. Uh, so those of you that are rocking Cena, Bluetooth, that kind of thing, listen to music. So it's prepped for the install of those devices. Big thumbs up there. Dual adjustable chin vents, top and rear ventilation, removable chin noise and air dam. The cost of this helmet for this limited production is $499.95 US. So 500 bucks. Now, regarding the uh, this particular variant of the Simpson Ghost Bandit, they only make a limited number and when they're gone, they're gone. Most people are already sold out. You can still find a few of them on Flea Bay in areas that they happen to have your size. If you happen to want this helmet, you better buy it now. It's not gonna be available in another 30 days from now. So they're, per they're almost 100% sold out. Simpson themselves is sold out on this helmet. When I checked, I had to buy this one off a vendor on eBay. Another side note is it's set up for pin lock if you choose so. I did order a uh, erodium shield, a mirrored shield for it uh, that's been on back order and it's finally in the mail from RevZill and I should get that sometime this week. My eyes are sensitive to light so I tend to really black out or murder out my uh, face shields on a regular basis. I love this helmet. I've, I've ran it for about 300 miles. I kind of wanted to get some time on it before I, I sat down and talked to you about it and so far it fits like a champ. Now, Revzilla said right on their website that Simpson helmets tend to run a tad small. I have an extra large head. I wear about a seven and a half inch hat, add a bunch of hair, that probably went up a little bit. But uh, in my particular case, this is an extra large and it fit my head like a dream. Two thumbs up for me. Personally, I don't think it runs small, but that's my, my uh, humble opinion. I'm looking forward to many years of good use out of this helmet. I may set this up for my motive vlog because I'm getting tired of looking at my turtle helmet. I don't know, I'll make some decisions there. It's more a case of sticking GoPro stickies all over the helmet and, you know, kind of mucking up the, uh, the coolness of that limited edition paint scheme. So that's all I've got. I hope I gave you a few things to think about regarding helmets. I love my gear. I have fun with it. That's why I rock really weird helmets and stuff like that, and seasonal helmets, Halloween helmets, Christmas helmets, stuff like that. If you got to wear sa safety gear, why not have some fun with it? You should as well. There's my ghost dog. That means it's time for the end of this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more in the future, hit that subscribe button right down there in the corner. And remember, folks, go riding. It's good for you, and I'll see you in the next one.